Hey guys, welcome back. So, following on from last week's test of the new Simutility yeah. irons, um, we're going to kind of stay uh, on that track. And it's one that we've been anxious to test for a bit because I, I don't think I'm wrong in saying there's not very many that have an adjustable hosel. Yeah, really since, really since the Gapper. Yeah, um, that's right. Gapper, Gapper was, was probably the only other one that had the adjustable sleeve and, and kind of had that wood kind of technology, that adjustable loft technology in there. Right. Normally what we just rely on is the, the softer material just to bend the loft bend and lie uh, as we need to on our, on our machine. It's an interesting idea though because if I bought this driving iron, I'm playing a Lynx course, I loft it down to its strongest. Yeah. Another day I'm going to play a parkland course where I'm going to hit it into a lot of greens and par fives, I'll loft it back up. Yeah. I'm not going to come to see you twice and bend it. It's a different conversation. I think there's a place for it as like a feature of the club. Yeah, 100%. So the one we've got today is 19 and a half degrees as standard. So kind of your modern three iron. That's kind of where three iron is nowadays. Yeah. Um, so we're going to... It does say three. Sorry. Yeah, so that's, that's, <laughs> three. that's the three utility. And, what we'll do is we, let's, let's test it at its neutral form, mm. but let's give people an idea of, okay, if you do move it into its open, or not open, but if you move it up or move it down in loft, how much does that change it? What's the difference that those, that, that club can be? How versatile can it be? I'm also very curious what changes to cause that. Yeah. You know, we know the loft's gonna move, but yeah. will lie angle move? Will it affect shot shape for point. people? It's you know, point. maybe it's a fitting tool to some degree for, yeah. for a driving iron player. Definitely. Um, looking at the standard specs on it, uh, it comes in, it comes in a little bit upright yes. on standard specs. You were sixty one point seven five standard six iron is at sixty two. Yeah, we. It's funny. It just wasn't whether it's the catalyst eighty gram shaft just drooping for you excessively. It, it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't coming in upright no. for you at all. No, I had kind of a couple left, back to the right draws mm -hmm. and. So who knows? Maybe it who is knows? a dynamic thing where it's coming in fine, but we'll find out, I guess. We certainly will. Okay, um, we're gonna clear the warm-up data. You hit a couple of shots just loosening up there, but from we will scratch, banish so this those is, ones. This is 19 and a half. 19 and a half, Matty. Um, you played your Callaway iron uh, a few years ago, went to hybrid, just felt like it was more versatile for you. <laughs> no, um, no, I can't stand my iron. No, you can't stand the <laughs> hybrid. Watch me love this. What do you think, yeah, I mean, in terms it, of a driving iron in, uh, in, in your own bag? Yeah, it, it seems to be, I like all the ones we test. Yeah. And it might be something that makes more sense for me to get back into, mm -hmm. given the fact that the hybrid's not really fulfilling a role right now. I might, I might be back in the market for one. Well, let's, uh, let's open up with a few, a few B ones with this, and then we'll start uh, tweaking it around a little bit. So it looks pretty good overall. I do think people will complain that you can see the king at the back. Yeah, yeah. I do think people might note that, but that being said, you can see the back of every driving iron. It's just usually that they're blank in that, in that part of the head. Right. Two forty on the fly, Matty. That's pretty, pretty tasty. Sporty. 150, coming out 10, 4, 33. Nice, great strike. Good start, eh? Feels pretty good. Oh, good as that. A little low in the face, maybe? Okay, so you maybe lost five or six yards, strain a little bit low. At most, yeah. Yep. Yeah, not bad. The kind of design of this one, Matt, is it's, it is designed to play similar to what people will be familiar with, uh, what Taylor may do with the speed slot in the bottom. Right. A little bit more contribution down low. Um, you've actually got the face. The face is attached to the sole plate. As you can see, that dark area. Yeah. So the face and that piece are all one piece forged, kind of uh, steel welded to oh, the, the, okay. the kind of what Cobra called the power shell body right. uh, around that. So that's kind of where you get the speed uh, from and, and sort of the significant distance. And it is pretty... It's pretty, pretty hot, isn't Seems it? Seems to be effective. Well, you just can't afford to, you know, thin a driving iron and you're trying to hit it 250 and it goes 210. You just yeah. can't afford to do that no. with a T-club. And I just think when it comes to a driving iron, I know a lot of people maybe may think that, you know, the modern three iron, so if your irons are stronger lofted, mm. I, I think of it often with something like a T100S. Yeah. The three iron in that is about 19 degrees. It's pretty strong. Might even be a little bit stronger than that, maybe 18. 
something along those lines. I just don't think it offers you the forgiveness that oh, that offers you. Not even close. That isn't a driving iron, what you're saying. It's That's not just a driving an iron. iron. It's, it's a iron. matching iron to the set. This is a, this is a driving iron. Yeah. This is designed um, as an off the tee or for a long second shot. It's a great summary of why the, these clubs are always bigger than mm -hmm. those traditional irons because the forgiveness requires the shape. You yeah. can't do that in a, you know, a bladed iron. Definitely. Okay, a couple more and then okay. we'll uh, play, play around, around with, with the sleeve. You're not having any issue getting up in there. I mean, it's no. It's up and high. I think I'll people like will it. like the sound. Yeah. It just sounds like you've hit it hard. It's jumpy. Yeah, that one launched up and spun a bit less there. So, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's, it's performing like a three wood. It really it, is. The numbers I would, would basically tell you that you're hitting a three wood. I think that's where it's interesting taking a 19.5 degree lofted club. You take a 15 degree lofted club, CG location at that point can sort of neutralize the result uh, of both of those from a launch and spin perspective. So, um, you know, the, the shallow bo body front to back and, and the, the height, obviously, so bringing the CG forward, raising it up, can deliver obviously less loft than moving that CG loan back. Because I have a hard time getting those numbers with the three wood. Speed obviously yeah. is down, I get that, yeah. because of the loft, but to get 12 launch, 2800 with a three wood, <clears throat> we'd be quite happy with be that. Very desirable, wouldn't it? So you can see why the iron is a good option for someone that yeah. struggles with the three wood. And obviously what you, you do is you go, you're going with a shorter option, limits the club head speed, in turn will limit the ball speed, mm. and then it fits a different role in the bag. Yeah, it's quite good. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I would let's, like it at 19.5. Let's, um, what do you want to do, down first? Yeah, let's, let's, let's see how toasty we can make it. Let's see if we can, I mean, Ultimately, uh, it's going 270 there. I mean, see if we can get a couple of roasters going. How far can it go? Yeah. yeah. Oh, pretty good. Mm hmm. It's, it's funny, you can't really. Summer, yeah, you can't really perceive the loft difference much at a dress. It's a bit more of the hot one. Get it turning a bit. That's a good one. Just trying to get one where I swung that 106 that that's 105, so it's close enough. Mm -hmm. I mean it doesn't really seem like it's gonna go a ton fast or farther. It's not really a guarantee that you're gonna hit it farther, is it? Get on there. Get on there, boy. <laughs> There's the... Yeah. I think that's, that's the one that... One, eh? Yeah, you're designing the club to do that in the lowest loft. More speed, less launch, less spin. A couple more yards, and the flight is underneath yeah. the other flight. Just to flatten it, just a little bit. So it's not, it's nice. not a, a difference that's going to sort of completely transform the club it's it's a subtle nudge in the right direction if you need it to be flatter it's pretty cool though yeah i think if you bought this club and you i mean we're going to show the third option in a minute but if mm -hmm. you had basically three options and all you got to do is twist the uh the screw yeah. a couple times on the on the first tee and you're set to go for the day yeah yeah no no metal fatigue no no kind of issue with bending it over time and kind of any, any of that sort of stuff now the higher quality forgings you shouldn't really have to worry about that stuff but again there just isn't even an option or, or an, no, an issue, no. you know. There's no, there is no bend marks going onto the hosel. There's none of that stuff. It's just it's just moving. Now it is only moving the loft. There is no lie adjustment. Well, it is moving it subtly more upright. Yes. We talked about that. So it is, it's an adjustable sleeve. Single axis sleeves move upright right. as they move off neutral. So whether it's moving it, you know, um, less loft or are up in loft that is moving more upright and we can see that mm. if we look at the dynamic lie angle oh, okay yep. yeah so we're back to neutral so you were a little bit toe down so it was, it was, it was relatively flat mm -hmm. now it's a little bit uh, more upright interesting yeah all right my man um lofted up and we're expecting this to be a little bit more now obviously of a second shot club yeah i think this is perfect for the person who 
set it on low to go play a Lynx course, maybe on a vacation or something. Yeah. Now they're back at a Parkland course and they're going to use it into par fives and long par fours. Yes. Needs to stop on a green. The, the scenario could also be the case that there's a, a player who is a little on the steeper side, has always really struggled with excessively spinning a, mm. a hybrid. And actually the loft is good for them, but the loft and the CG location being where they are could work quite nicely for their favor as well. Gotcha. That also could be um, So it could just work. be a one and done club that's perfect, you know, for a bunch of different situations. Yeah. yeah. And we're using it on the extreme low and the extreme high and neutral. Yes. There are multiple little yeah, there's incremental ones. Yeah, too. changes in between. That's a good point. Yeah, does it do? Is it half degree increments? Yeah, half degrees. Yeah, and also gives us the the draw by settings as well. That's nice. Look at the difference. Well, if there wasn't a great difference between the lowest and the standard setting, uh -huh. there's quite a difference there. No kidding. Look at that. Four forty one. Yeah, that's something else. Yeah. I mean, that's coming in, that's got to be 115 feet. 126. Jeez, that is high. It's crazy how different that is. Go on. I actually thinned that a bit, it went so high. Yeah. The spin probably climbed a bunch. That's doing what it was intended to do, though. I mean, obviously, when we're looking at a scenario like this, you, you see the same amount of change one way to the other. That does definitely tell us a lot about sort of the player and their delivery and, and what the player's comfortable doing with it. Okay, yep. Obviously, you know, you're not going to hit something at seven degrees launch. I mean, if you look at those, there's a four degree difference there. So you're not going to launch it at six degrees and... 2,000 spin. So you're saying at, at some point the player makes an adjustment? At some point the player will make an adjustment. And I probably did that with the lowest lofted yeah. one. Yeah, and, and that's why on the first couple you hit with them, I think the face was left a little bit open just to retain a little bit of loft and then the minute you got the loft matching up it, obviously the flight came down. Makes sense. Um, but you're more comfortable seeing some loft and you can just swing away. Obviously all of a sudden the, the height goes through the roof literally. <laughs> Very different flight. Three different clubs. It's three and one, some might say. It's good value. Absolutely. <laughs> three and one. I mean, there's, there's not like you can't do this with a hybrid. I think it's just cool that uh, a driving iron has the adjustable sleeve like this. Yeah. Where most don't. Yeah. I think that's the main appeal. And, and aside from that, I think it's still a good driving iron. It seems like it's pretty forgiving. Flight's nice, feels yeah. pretty good. When we tested the iron, um, we, we thought the iron performed really well. Yes, we did. Um, you know, we, we maybe just thought it was a, a hair clickier than a P790. And it, in it, in it is. Yeah. yeah. yeah Having just hit the sim uh, utility last week, mm -hmm. I would say this is a firmer feeling club. Yeah. It's hard to say whether that's negative though, because I think some people will hit that and go, oh, it feels great to me. How many people out there are using uh, Strix and Soft Fuel? Uh, you yeah. know, this and that. True. That's going to change the characteristics of these clubs entirely. And that's a firm ball that we're that's using. That's a firm ball. XV, so, no, totally true. Yeah. You use a softer golf ball and you like kind of a powerful feel, this might feel exactly the way you it'll want. It will be right in your wheelhouse. Yeah. I Could think this I? is a good club. Yeah. Would you fit with that? Throw that in the drawer? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, the challenge you've got is, uh, again, it's, it's the connector. The connector is unique, so, you know, we would then need to kind of build a connector into the connector. Play and, around with it. Yeah. But, I mean, it. From a performance standpoint, it's quite we'd interesting. Have, we'd have no issues putting that in there. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Really like it. Okay. Guys, um, I think that's these, these utility irons are, should be giving you something, maybe some food for thought for some of you who uh, maybe are struggling a little bit with hybrids, maybe never really been a Fairwood fan. You've got the option to go with the long iron as well. I think, you know, Matty's totally. proven that, you know, that that these are fairly easy to hit as well. You're not having a hard time managing that versus a hybrid at all. I don't think so at all. It's the first thing we did today, not much of a warm up, and there's plenty of forgiveness and help to get the ball up in the air and straight. I, I don't think it's a club that would cause anyone much anxiety to swing that. Definitely. Comfort Definitely. level club for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, stay tuned for more. We're going to try and get our hands on a few more driving irons. Mm. Uh, I think we've got a couple more coming our way in the, the next couple of we weeks. We do, yes. Um, so maybe we can do a little roundup and, and sort of give your thoughts as to, you know, maybe a little, a little ranking system, a little league table. Not a bracket. Uh, <laughs> but we uh, will not be a bracket. We will probably give our, our thoughts as to what ones we think are, are the, uh, the best of the bunch. Love okay? it. Yeah. Excellent. All right, guys, stay tuned for more. We'll see you again soon.